Hello everyone, this is GamePro24X, and today I'm going to be showing you guys something that I've been working on, testing, experimenting, for the past two months, because of how time-consuming each test has been. But now I feel like it's the most appropriate time to finally show you all the very thing that I've been working on. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'm very sorry for the wait, but trust me, it is worth it. So we're going to start off by setting up a dummy profile. So right now, what you're going to do is grab your legit profile and save it. Save it to a cloud save, put it on a flash drive, and you can move it from the flash drive to your PC. Just make sure you have your legitimate save file put somewhere safe. Because we'll be going back to that much later. All right, so to set up this dummy profile, we are going to be, we are going to do the, the exact following. And I know it's going to be very crazy, but just bear with me here. Now currently I have a lot of S++ in my entire base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab everyone on my security team and I'm going to dismiss them, all of them. Make sure there is nobody in your waiting room Make sure there's nobody in the sick bay. So and definitely team. make sure there's just nobody in the security team at all. Or anyone who's in the brig about to come out. Stop. There has to absolutely be zero people available. That so could possibly go into the security Stop. team. Dismissed. Once you have done that, I personally like to do this, but... I like to grab 9 staff, S++ staff, on each of the 5 units here. That way I have a nice little variety pack whenever I am farming with someone. You can discuss with your partner on what you plan Select to do. You can either have an entire security team full of nothing but R S++ R&D. Just so that it just makes things a little bit more consistent. But yeah. So by doing that, I had a total of 45 staff, so you can use the last three for whatever you want. I'm just going to put combat unit, just for this example. Now you're going to go into your security team and make sure everybody is off of direct contact. If they are in direct contact, this will not work. They will not show up on your FOB, and it's going to make things a little bit more hectic if you don't have things properly set up. Alright, there we go. All of them are off the direct contact. Now you're going to have to go into security settings. Now, the possibly the best and easiest platform to do this on is on the medical platform. It's just really simple and easy to do. So what we're going to do is go into basic settings and put the, pre the preparedness down to low. And make sure you only apply it to this platform. After that, go under all decks. And discuss with your partner what you want to do. You can either make it lethal or non-lethal. Because regardless, you're going to end up fighting. I prefer non-lethal because, you know, you have a chance to get up if they knock you out. Go down the guard rank and make sure you have the lowest highlighted rank possible. Because even though I have S++ on my security staff, a lot of them are B rank in combat. So you want to ensure they can all be seen in my FOB. Now you want to go down to your security devices and go down to 2. It's just enough to gray out everything else, so you don't have to go and move anything else out. Set the range type to mid-range, and make sure you have all 12 guards and you have 0 decoys. Apply it to platform, and you check all the other decks to make sure you have nothing but guards and absolutely no decoys. One last thing we're going to do is we're going to go into free roam because we're going to be make, uh, we're going to be creating our sortie loadout for the farming method. So I like to just keep on a lethal rifle because you know the, your partner will have to die, but use the non-lethal sniper rifles you got along with the grenade launcher, sleep grenade launcher, because that's always going to help. 
For your secondary, I chose to use the Wu S pistol at plus SB because that's a one shot down if you hit him in the body anywhere. So it's a real quick and easy way to get some cheap shots in. Go ahead and equip the Hand of Jehudi because that will help gather soldiers. And you want to equip the highest grade sleep grenade and smoke grenade just in case you need to make an escape. Now, the only downside by using non-lethal is that you can't see people with night vision goggles. So I prefer to do that in the day, but if you're doing this with a lethal team, then definitely bring night vision goggles. But always make sure you bring the highest grade Noctocyanin with you. And it's a, perf it's a personal preference, but make sure you have that wormhole. It, it just makes Fultoning a lot easier. And last but not least, put on your battle dress. Even though you're going non-lethal, or you're fighting against a non-lethal FOB, that battle dress does make a big difference, and you will end up surviving a lot longer with it. Game loads up, just go ahead and quit right into ACC. We just want to force a save, especially with the server. You see these four little squares moving around right here? That means it's linking up with the server, and that's going to be a very key important part of this entire uh, run. And we're going to label that as server checking. So whenever you hear me say server check, that means those little squares. So now we have completed our dummy profile. And what you're going to do is you're going to save it into your flash drive or whatever you got. That way you can easily just repeat this step over and over and over without having to reconstruct an entire new dummy. Step two, you're going to need to get a buddy and you're going to have to open a retaliatory wormhole on each other. So to do this, add your friend, add your new buddy to your PSN, go under relationships, and go under friends, and support that player, and he will support you too. After that, if, depending on who wants to go first, whoever's going first, go to free roam, that way you can force a server check every single time, because in free roam, you always see those little squares. They're always syncing, syncing up with the server, and I noticed that while you're in ACC, it doesn't really do it that often. So while you're here in free roam, your buddy is currently visiting your FOB, and to open up a retaliatory hole, you have to do something bad. You have to either take a mine, destroy a mine, destroy a camera, kill a soldier, anything like that. You'll get kicked out, and it'll say that you open up a, a retaliatory hole against you and sometimes it works the first time and then there are other times where I had to where we had to do it twice and it opens up but but it will open up so you're gonna so you're gonna have to be communicating with your buddy here and he has to let you know the second when he is back in the ACC for you to also go back to the ACC but meanwhile just keep running around triggering checkpoints and syncing up with the server and it's syncing up with the server now. That way when we return to ACC, we will get a notification saying that something happened. Now I'm going to check to see if the retaliatory hole is up. If it's not up, you guys will either automatically be unsupporting each other or sometimes you will. But if it did work, then you'll see your buddy there in the retaliation list. So now you're gonna have to go in and start capturing that the S++ staff. And we're going to go in with that loadout that we already previously had set up. And I like to do this during the daytime because uh, like I said if you're doing the non-lethal run then it's going to be very hard seeing these guys at, at night. One thing you really have to do here is on the first platform, you have to make sure you, you, you're not caught. Don't get caught here on the first platform. It's very, very important that you do not get caught. So knock out every, stat, every soldier that's on here and fault in every last one of them. There should only be eight people here on this first platform. 
Now the reason why I said to put only 48 soldiers is because you can only carry 48 Fultons. So, once you get down the 40 Fultons, you'll know that you have captured every single staff on this platform. Now what your buddy is going to be doing at this moment in time is he's going to be waiting in free room and he's going to be running around the checkpoint and he's going to be syncing up with the server. By now, he already has the alert message saying that uh, he's getting invaded. But we don't want him to join yet. We want him to join when I have reached the second platform. Now, if you do end up getting caught and you do end up messing up this run, don't worry, just go back to the ACC and you'll be able to retaliate again. It should still be open for you to go over there and grab. And there we go, this is going to be our last person. So that is all eight people. Now I'm going to head on over to the second platform and I'm going to be communicating with my buddy that I'm already moving over there and he should start showing up right about now. Now like I said before, you have to purposely get caught here. The reason why you need to get caught here is because if you were to if you happen to perfect stealth this entire FOB, there's only 12 staff on the final platform and 8 staff on all the other platforms. That's about, oh I don't know, maybe 30, 35-ish staff out of the 48 you could have potentially had. But after so many weeks of testing, we found out that when you get caught on the second platform, the alert will bring in reinforcements and it will bring in the remaining staff that will make you go up to 48. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm waiting for him to show up because the second he shows up, uh, people will be awake again and I don't think I get an ammo refill. So that, that kind of sucks unless I'm wrong. But I'm just waiting for him to show up because when he does, people will be uh, like waking up and they'll be walking around and everything will go back to normal. But you will have to get caught again. So if you do get caught on the first platform, you're not going to be able to get the rest of the staff that your buddy had set up. I don't know why that is. We've tested it numerous times, and like I said before, we just came to the conclusion that you have to get caught on the second platform if you want to grab all 48 staff members from your buddy. Now sometimes people will spawn behind you. That's kind of what happens when you get caught during an FOB raid, that people will just spawn behind you even though I made sure there was no one else left there. That's just what happens, and as your buddy is cupping in, what he can do for you is he can Fulton the mortar so that they can't use the sleep gas mortars on you. It will make things a lot easier. He can also Fulton some of the AA guns that are looking across the bridge. That way you're not completely gunned down when you're trying to traverse. And most importantly, he will be able to pull up the iDroid and he'll see exactly where everybody is positioned. And I will go over this again when I show my view of me being the defender. And you'll see exactly what I mean by all of this. But for now, your main focus is to survive and fold in as many people as possible. Now, I made, I was trying to test something out here, and I wanted to see how it would be like just to use this uh, AA gun to potentially knock people out. And it, the thing is, is that it will put them in a stun state. And the big difference between a stun state and a sleep state is that the stun state, you, guards will wake up a lot sooner when they're stunned than they will if they were put to sleep. So I prefer putting guards to sleep over stunning them any day. They just stay down a lot longer. And sadly, these AA guns shoot only rubber bullets, so 
you will not be able to put them to sleep or anything like that. Unless you had a mortar, but like I said, the only mortar that's available is at the final platform and they will most likely be using it. So, like I said, communicate with your buddy, run this over with your buddy, and make sure they know where exactly to go. And, and like I said before, we will go over this again when it is my turn to be the defender and my buddy to be the attacker. This is the part that I was mentioning earlier about being in the AA gun. Now, the pretty nice thing about this little strategy was that I was actually able to gun down a lot of people that were just in one spot. And when they all woke up at once, I was just able to use a grenade launcher and put them all back to sleep. So, like I said, uh, I'd rather, if I was to redo this video for, for whatever reason, I probably would recommend not doing this. Just go to the third platform start throwing grenades, start using non-lethal trank darts, whatever. But this, uh, it's not a good idea. Just in general, it's not a good idea. And the Hand of Jehudi is really great for grabbing soldiers from far away just so you can fault them at a safe distance, like behind cover or something. Yeah, and like I said, they all woke up at the, at the same exact spot, so one grenade launcher was enough to knock out all of them. But like I said, I don't think you will get that lucky that often. And there's my buddy right there. He just passed by me. His goal is to assist me in any way he can. And with the Hand of Jehudi, he can also grab his own soldiers and put them in one nice neat pile. That way you can just phone all of them at once. And I'm using the last of my noctocyanin pills, that way I can just see more soldiers around corners or anything like that. And like I said, they are pretty hard to spot sometimes. That's why I prefer doing this in the daytime. Well, if you're using noctocyanin, they're a lot easier to see during night. But like I said before, because they're wearing the sneaking suits, that also complicates things. And now we are heading towards the final platform. Now normally they like to just bunch up around the AA gun and especially right around the core. So if you, especially if you have the grade 7 sleep grenades which will practically knock you out a mile away, definitely start chucking a few of them near the middle of the platform. That way you can knock out a really good portion of people. And see here he is right now helping me out by gathering a bunch of soldiers into one spot. And see, it doesn't matter if the camera spots me, this was the last soldier left, so it really doesn't matter.
Alright, so now that I've fallen everyone, my only option left is to die. And it doesn't matter if I kill myself or my partner kills me, just so long as you die. Do not, I repeat, do not reach the core. Especially if you are doing this multiple times for to get different S++ staff from the same buddy. Do not get to the core, or else you will end up rescuing everyone, and it will just screw everything up. So there we go, we are done. I collected 47 S++ pluses. Sometimes they will end up killing each other because they will use grenades and it turns out it's, full, it's, it's lethal grenades. So yeah, that will cause some problems. So sometimes they'll be injured, but hey, 47 is a lot better than just, you know, a very, very minuscule amount. All right, now it is my turn to be the defender. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into free roam. That way the server is always syncing up to let me know what is going on. Now because I don't need all this equipment, you can just practically de-equip everything. Because all you really need is just a hand injury hoodie. That's all. Your friend's not going to be fighting you. And you're not really going to be fighting anyone else. So I just chose to leave them on because, well, I don't care. Materials are nothing to me. So as I stated before, if you are when you're in free roam, just keep walking by checkpoints. Keep on doing a, a server check. Just remember that this is all under one dummy profile. So after one person went, you guys will then switch sides. And after that, then you will do another cycle. And another cycle essentially means you grab the save file from the, from the USB and you move it back into the system as if nothing ever happened. Alright, so I'm communicating with my buddy. And he's going to let me know when he is reaching the second platform. Now... If you try to enter and it doesn't let you in, close the entire iDroid and then open it back up and try it again. That usually fixes the problem. But if it doesn't, I would say go to ACC and you know try to join from there. Sometimes things happen and connection issues are a bitch. So. But the very, very, very most important thing you need to do after you're done defending your base is you need to go back in the free room to do a server check. Because if you don't, oh, uh, one last thing is you want to make sure you fall in that mortar just before you you leave that platform, and that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm falling in the mortar and anything else that could possibly harm my buddy, and slow down this process. As I was saying, you need to perform a server check after you have you are done defending your base, because when you if you were to go load up your legit profile. The game will say, oh, someone invaded you and they stole all these S++ staff and it will then take away the staff from your legit save, which is not a good thing. What you wanted to do is you wanted to, st to take the S++ staff that's from your dummy account. That way when you re-upload it, it will act like it never happened. There will be records of it that it did happen, but like I said, they just it won't show up. Your staff won't be taken again. They'll only be taken once, and that is it. And that is the whole purpose of this entire farm. So here's something interesting that I discovered is that if you're using... You, you, you can essentially use your own men as a way to knock out your other uh, staff. <laughs> it's kind of funny. You really want to be careful doing this, especially if you're around the if you're around the edges, because you can accidentally throw them over the the edge, and that's pretty bad because you know you ended up killing an S plus plus that your friend could have got. But yeah, I just told my friend here that there was a bunch of them just held up underneath there, and look at that, just one grenade and just knocked out an entire squad in seconds. So, like I said, communication is very important. So if you're doing this without a mic, uh, I don't know how you guys would manage it, but I'm just saying you will definitely need it if you're trying to do this together. And you want to try to do this as fast as possible.
Now there's only so much you can do, and sometimes lag will just, you know, it won't allow you to knock out staff. But what you can do is, like I said, use Hana Chihuti, grab staff for your buddy. Uh, you can also use the Hana Chihuti to, to reposition some of your staff that are moving around still. So that's always nice. But like I said, be a team player and help out your buddy. Let him know if he's getting surrounded, where the locations of all of your staff are. And, you know, if you happen to see a few staff members that are pretty out of the way, like underneath the bridge or something, definitely go get them. If you're playing with a buddy who's experienced with doing this kind of stuff, then he should be able to take care of his, himself. But if you do get knocked out, if you're if you are defending and your buddy gets knocked out, please relay that to your to each other immediately because they will try to Fulton you after that. So the thing that you your buddy can do or you can do to prevent that is you can use the hand of Jehudi and grab whoever is running towards him and you know halt or prolong the Fultoning process until he wakes up. And there we go. The, you see how he just threw a grenade? And look at that. It's a lethal grenade. And I'm actually kind of surprised that that dude lived because normally they don't. And I told him, hey, you should you should hurry up and Fulton that guy because he might be dying. So, yeah. Like I said, the, they will kill each other. So, be wary of that. But like I said, most of the time you will at least get over 45, 40 S++. Plus pluses, and trust me, that's a lot compared to what everyone has been doing up until now. So as you can see here, you can just see how all the staff just like to bunch up together in the middle. So throw some grenades right there in the middle and you'll be able to knock out a really good percentage of the entire platform. Now what I normally like to do is, while my buddy is picking up people from down below, I'll just grab whoever is knocked out from the second or third story and I'll just start tossing them down as like a little personal delivery service. <laughs> It 
This was actually pretty nice. He was able to knock him out, and I was able to just grab him. And I was just able to pick him up and toss him right down for him. Now, I probably should have waited for him to successfully fault in that last dude, but like I said, he just needs to die after that, and it doesn't matter how you get rid of him. If it, it can be a suicide or you just killing him yourself. So. so right here it says that he took 45 of my S++ staff, so he gets to walk away with that. And you actually do get some plants and stuff out of it too, so it, it's a nice little bonus on the side. But I wouldn't recommend this for like plant farming or anything like that. <laughs> That'd be ridiculous. And I thought this was funny that I earned an S plus on this FOB. <laughs> Alright, so now when you go to your online brig, you'll see that you have a bunch of S plus plus staff waiting to be let out. Now, you, one thing you need to know about that is it takes three full days for them to come out so you can just if you want you can end up just farming this with another buddy with another set of s plus pluses all you need to know is that on the third day make sure you're on your legit profile the last thing that you need to do is be on your dummy profile when you receive all these s plus plus people because that's gonna suck because of course the dummy profile is gonna be a profile you don't really care about it's just something you just delete and that's it. So once you're done, you can, and like I said before, if you want to do this again with another buddy, all you do is re-upload your dummy profile and there you go. You have all of your staff back that you lost and you both have each other's staff that you took from each other and you can easily do it again with another person now what i just chose to do is i chose to go on my legit save and on my legit save obviously i should have some missing people because they were just stolen well guess what they're not <laughs> thanks to phantom fob method you'll never lose staff ever and because of that you can combo that with uh, the s plus plus farming method and you'll end up just gaining more S++ pluses along the way. So yes, in three days time, these people will be added to my inventory. Or to my mother base. Now, what makes this method really interesting is that, say that every event, you and a buddy always just traded each other S++ pluses. Um, imagine being a part of a community that you have nine other people with you or ten other people with you that are gonna do the same thing every single event. Every single event will give you three S++ pluses on all the other units and combat will always give you five. So that's about 20 people. Imagine doing that with ten other people. You're gonna get 200 S++ plus staff out of this every single event because you all essentially grinded off of each other and you guys farmed S++ pluses off of each other the biggest thing that will make this method succeed is if you're playing with a dedicated group that are always there to give each other S++ plus plus staff to level up and I strongly encourage anyone who is watching this video now if you are looking for a very dedicated community who wants to earn up to level 140 on all their units and you know hand out s++ staff definitely join my discord chat because there's always people talking there and it's always something interesting to go and check up on every day
Now with now if you if you were going with the route of using the only the the event S plus plus staff that you earn for for the current event or what? Basically, what you'll have to do is you grab all twenty of those guys, put them in your security staff, and when you go into the settings, the security settings, make sure you have at least maybe twenty five staff total, because what the game will do is you don't want to have you know an entire base full of people that kind of don't exist because if you made your FOB hold 48 people but you really only have 20 what the game's gonna do it's gonna automatically generate a lot of E rank staff there and it's gonna make things a lot more complicated because now you have to literally sit there and scan every single soldier making sure they're legit so to eliminate that add a few extra staff and when you go into the farming method bring a lethal weapon and if you find an E rank just kill him kill him on the spot and if you see S plus pluses you know knock them out and fold them so yeah give yourself a little extra that way the game doesn't automatically give you a fuck ton of E ranks it'll just give you just that little bit so as I mentioned before I created this discord chat mainly because I wanted to bring a community together and help each other out but the most important reason why I really wanted to make this community was for this method because this method cannot survive without a buddy without people who would want to share and and help each other out but if you want to join this I'll have all the information down in the description below when you join be sure you ask Zanzi or Arham, whoever may be online at the moment, because I'm not online all the time, even though it says I am. Uh, but I know one of them are, and they will put you in a proper role. And each role is just what console you're on. And it'll definitely help you identify who is on what console. And you can easily use the, the consoles on the left side of the tab there and try to find people who want to do S++ farming. So I highly recommend doing that because as because <clears throat> as it seems right now, I don't think there's really any good solid communities of this game around. So it's pretty it's pretty nice. Uh, people here are really helpful, they're respectable and I really enjoy it. So, I encourage more of you guys to come in and come in and join and uh, fill up a lot of those spaces and bring more to the table. So, sorry this video was very long. Uh, like I said, this took a lot of studying and testing to figure out every little small bit of detail possible. And I wish there could have been a TLDR version of it, but there really isn't. There are certain things that you need to know, that you need to understand in order for you to properly do this method. So, uh, again, uh, sorry about that, and I don't know, maybe it's something else I can work on in the future, but for now, this is all I have to do. Now, some pretty interesting history about the method here is that during patch 1.08, it was actually entirely possible duplicating staff, meaning that once you were done with that dummy profile, you literally just re-upload it again, and you do the same thing with the same exact person, you end up having four or five of that same person. However, we were only getting we were, we only got one successful duplication, and during that very small week when one patch 1.08 was out. One patch 1.09 came out shortly after, and I think it was for MGO. But ever since then, we weren't able to duplicate ever again. And I know for a fact because I did look it up and everything. I know for a fact Konami had not had no idea about duplicating staff at all. So I just have a. It, it may be one of those things where they went in to fix something else, and it inevitably fixed uh, a different thing that they never knew about. So 
I'm just telling you right now, you can't duplicate people. You, like, you can definitely steal them, and you'll see them in your FOB brig, but as soon as they come out of the brig, they'll disappear. Only the ones that you first stole will stay in your FOB. So that's something interesting that you should know. There's some other things that I was testing that try to have the possibility of duplicating, but no success so far. So, I would like to thank all the people who helped me make this method. I would like to thank Ludo, uh, Scooty, Blizzard, and Darkbit. So, definitely go check out his channel. But, I thank you all for helping me uh, discover this amazing method and learning a lot from it and dissecting it the way that we did. And I just know this is something that's going to help everyone, just like how Infinity Farming helped a lot of people survive the grind. So, <clears throat> One last thing that should be noted is that the starter S++ people that you get at the very end game... For some reason, they can be duplicated. Not in a way that I mentioned before. What I mean is that if I give you my endgame S++ staff, they will remain in your FOB. And I'm going to go ahead and have some pictures up. But yeah, especially this Glacier Mongoose. I have a fuck ton of Glacier Mongooses. But, that's, but that is one of the starter S++ people that you get. And for some reason, you can just take them from other people and they will be kept. However, if you try doing that with other staff, it just doesn't work that way. It'll just the game will treat it as all the same, and it'll get rid of the duplicates. However, with this, they're legitimately the same person. They're just different. I don't know how to explain it, but yep. Anyways, I hope this was helpful, and I thank you all for watching. This is Gamer Twenty Four X, and I'll see you guys later.